Welcome to Mac and Jack Talk NBA. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Before we start today's episode. I want to talk about some of our predictions we made last episode on how the Miami Heat and Toronto Raptors are turning it around. Toronto Raptors, as we speak right now, are the seventh seed, and Miami Heat with Jimmy Butler coming back, averaging triple doubles, are now the ninth seed. So yeah, good on those two, and we see them going into the playoffs, probably around fifth to sixth seed, and really contending and going to the second round and beyond. In today's episode. We want to discuss about underrated players in the NBA right now. In particular, two guards. The first one is Mike Conley of the Utah Jazz. They are currently sitting on the first seed in the West and the NBA's best record. The second player is Drew Holiday of the Milwaukee Bucks. So the Jazz are currently twenty-one and five. Which is the best record in the whole entire NBA? So let's first talk about Mike Conley. What I've seen compared to last year, where he averaged fourteen point four points per game, and then I mean, what I see from Mike Conley is that the first season when he was traded away from the Grizzlies to the Jazz. He had to learn how to play off the ball more because now he is playing with capable, multiple capable ball handles like Donovan Mitchell and Joe Ingles. So yeah, last season he was averaging fourteen point four points per game, three rebounds, and four point four assists. So as Nelson stated last year, after he got traded from the Memphis Grizzlies to the Utah Jazz, he had to adjust. With some injuries, and then also the fact that he had to learn how to play off ball since in the Memphis Grizzlies, he was the main primary ball handler, and plus how to, and last season was more about Donovan Mitchell grow,、uh, grooming into a all star like superstar, assisting and doing a bit of everything. This year, at, and last year he had to play more off ball. What I see this year is that he's more comfortable with playing off ball. Joe Ingles is generally the main benefactor of the one who's ball handling, dishing it to Mike Conley when it, he's in the corner three, and they run a、uh, and the Utah Jazz runs a bit more the of the Spurs hammer play where it gets Mike Conley or any great shooter in the corner open. Yeah, I see. With Mike Conley playing off the ball, he has a really nice one-two game and partnership with Joe Ingles. They pass to each other. They both can handle the ball. They both could drive in. They could both shoot. I see Mike Conley as well.、Uh, a lot of times, he's the beneficiary shooter of the hammer play where. He gets a pick and he slides off when Joe Ingles drives in. He just hammers it, throws it along the baseline, and Mike Conley is shooting it from the corner. And he's shooting very well from the three point percentage. If I remember correctly, let's look it up. I believe he's shooting above. He's shooting forty one percent from the three point line, which is very very good on seven attempts. That is quite impressive. He's also does. <clears throat> he also. Uh, is quite playing well with Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert sometimes has low post positions, and when Mike Conley drives in and penetrates the defense, he's able to dish it off to Rudy Gobert. And Rudy Gobert is another benefactory of Mike Conley. So, what do you see overall, and what is your impression of Mike Conley when you watch him play? As we said, Mike Conley is more comfortable with the system in Quinn Snyder's offensive system because Quinn Snyder is a pretty much genius. And what I see is this year, whenever Mike Conley drives in, instead of a general layup, he practically floaters it in over a bigger man. And when he has the mismatch, he isos for a step back、uh, mid range, which is his bread and butter before in the Memphis Grizzlies. But now that Quinn Snyder is able to utilize utilize that Mike Conley's skill pro pro skills. It actually makes Mike Conley more deadly, that which is why I can see why they're the number one seed in, of the West, 
And the fact that they're passing a bit more, they're willingly to share the ball, there's no ego. I think they're coming back with a vengeance from being down th- uh, 3-1, uh, f- of losing a record of 3-1 against the uh, Denver Nuggets in the first round last year and how they were one or two plays away from advancing to the semis, Western Conference semis. I think this year they're playing with a mission. There's no ego. As Nelson said, what, uh, his game with Rudy Gobert, I think it's really nice because whenever Mike Conley is able to penetrate deep inside, he bounce passes to Gobert so Rudy Gobert can just easily just dunk it instead of lobbing it, which makes Mike uh, Rudy Gobert's life easier and also uh, space, uh, space the floor better. What I see from Mike Conley is that he overall is a very under control player. What makes him underrated is from an eye test and me watching his game is that he's not very flashy. He does have bits and spurts of crossovers and step back three pointers and corner threes. But he is not a high-flying dunker. He's not an athletic beast. He does not cross people over and break their ankles. He does not dribble, dribble, step back, step back like a James Harden. He does not pull up from 30 feet, transition three-pointer like a Damian Lillard, like a Stephon Curry. And that is why he is not that flashy and thus underrated. But he is a winner. He has won at Memphis Grizzlies at the Grindhouse under Lionel Collins. Under uh, playing with Zach Randolph, Zebo, and the prime Mark Gasol, where he won Defensive Player of the Year, and Mike Conley, they were the big three in the Memphis Grizzlies and went to the Western Conference Finals multiple times and pushed Spurs to the brink. So Mike Conley has won in the Memphis Grizzly area with the grind. Grindhouse and the pounding and the two pointers, and now Quinn Snyder's free flowing three pointer. So he he's able to adapt to, to to today's game, and he is a winner. Now transitioning to another player we think is underrated is Drew Holiday, and did you know there is one particular thing that. Drew Holiday and Mike Conley have in common and that is that they've won both won the same award a very underrated award as well do you know what award that is Jack no is it the teammate award of the year yes it is the NBA teammate of the year very underrated award I actually think these are given to players that cause no trouble in the locker room and they are Generally given to winners. Team, uh, players that win in whichever team they've played in. Previous winners were Shane Battier, Dirk Nowitzki, Chauncey Billups. These guys are all-stars or Hall of Famers. So Mike Conley has won it last season. And two seasons before, Drew Holiday has won it. So what do you see in Drew Holiday's game, Jack? So... Let's give a little bit of stats. Drew Holiday is currently averaging 16.4 points per game, 4.8 total rebounds, 5.4 assists. Like Mike Conley, his game is not flashy. However, it's more controlled and he's able to drive in with a strong body frame. He has a 6'7 body w- uh, wingspan and a 6'3 body height. And he has a really good three point shooter. His off-ball game with Giannis is pretty good. What do you see? I see from offensive point of view that I I can understand why people think they're kind of boring and they're underrated because when I watch them play, I agree. Offensively, it is a little bit boring. I mean, they are good players. They can score. They are efficient. Drew Holiday can shoot the three. He could pass. He has a little bit of handles. He can cross over a little bit. He could penetrate and drive in. And he's very under control. But yeah, watching it, it's kind of boring. But boring sometimes might be good. These guys are winners. Sometimes you don't want a flashy player like, for example, a LaMelo Ball. Does all these flashy plays but turns the ball over like crazy. Out of control. Throws it behind the back out of bounds. Um... 
so from what I see again from Drew Holiday is that he plays under control, which I really like, but he's not very skilled or talented offensively. Again, he can't jump out of the gym. He is not going to dunk on a player. He's not going to posterize anyone like Mike Conley cannot either. He sometimes stands in the corner and waits for a pass to him and he shoots the three and he makes it. He doesn't do crazy celebrations or when during media time, he doesn't talk a lot of smack. So that is why they're underrated. But what is not underrated from Drew Holiday is on the the defensive side of things that is when he is showing why he has won nba all defensive first time uh, first team one time and second team one time this guy in my opinion should have been in the first three considerations of nba defensive player of the year he is a defensive monster what do you see jack so what i see is that First of all, even Kevin Durant, the greatest offensive player of the modern day, compliments that he has trouble posting up against Drew Holiday, which is very rare as KD is very mobile like a guard but has a big man size. So if KD, the greatest scorer of all of the modern era, compliments Drew Holiday, you can tell how underrated Drew Holiday is. So what I see is... Drew Holiday, Drew Holiday likes to intercept generally from behind, especially when it's off ball or off whenever he goes under the screen. He knows when to poke from behind, and especially when he knows that the big men generally don't pay attention towards after ball, uh, the ball handle. He pokes it from behind, so then he's able to get the turnover from the other team, give it to Chris Middleton or even Giannis Antetokounmpo to set up a offensive a transition play really easily. And even against Steph Curry, who has a master class, Steph Curry also has trouble against Drew Holiday. When uh, when Steph Curry is playing like crazy, shooting like crazy nowadays, against Drew Holiday, he is helpless because Drew Holiday hounds like Patrick Beverly, but he's not overly aggressive enough to make the wrong gamble because most players nowadays whenever they gamble they gamble at the wrong moment especially against Steph Curry which is why Steph Curry can jack up uh, around anywhere but Drew Holly he's very poised he's active move his hand and whenever he sees a Golden State Warriors setting a pick for uh, uh, going for setting a pick for Steph Curry. He'll naturally go underhand, and even if when Steph Curry tries to jack it up, it's because Drew Holiday has a six seven wingspan. He can his recovery is a lot quicker than most guards. What do you see, Mac? What I see from Drew Holiday is. That, yeah, he can hound. He's very under control. He doesn't gamble. From guarding offensive players drive in, he can body you but not push against you. He bodies you and pull backs to stop your momentum. His arms are not fouling you and not touching you, so he does not get called for a defensive foul. On a lot of picks, he's able to completely negate it. It is amazing. He keeps himself thin like a piece of paper and slides through like a door, negating the pick as well. And when great shooters like Stephon Curry or Damian Litter pulls up and shoot, he does not foul. He does not even get close enough to give the ref an error of margin to even call and blow the whistle because it's clearly he is not fouling. But he is doing it so that... He is contesting hard and making the shooters uncomfortable enough to drop their three point percentage. Yeah, what I also see is even though sometimes he gets beat, which is inevitable as the NBA offensive players are really good, he makes up for it by with his long wingspan because he'll block you from behind, which gives a great boost towards your teammate because you're able to recover. So you're the other help defender pressure. Is relieved. 
Yeah, I agree. And another thing, as Jack has mentioned, a lot of these big men are not aware enough of where the guard defender are, is. For example, when they drop off the ball or they get the ball and they're holding it and they're trying to find cutters, they are looking at their teammates and they're not aware. And that's where Drew Holiday sneaks in and flicks it with his hands. Or when they throw a pass, Drew Holiday might circle around and he's able to read the pass before it has been made and go in the direction uh, where the pass is going to and block and knock it out of bounds. And another impressive thing about Drew Holiday is that he does not get called for a lot of defensive fouls and he he is very good at playing angles. So what he does is with these quick players, he's able to angle and block them off and force them along the baseline and force them in the point that they are very close to walking a uh, wire on being on or off the floor and that causes a lot of turnover that is very very impressive and another thing about gambling is that when you notice a lot of great defensive players like a Drew Holiday like a Kawhi Leonard they are very good and smart in using their length and their big hands they will lunge forward slightly but still keep most of their balance on the on their toes of their feet and so if they miss the steal they are able to still recover and body the offensive player. On bad defenders, you see them, sometimes James Harden does this, he would gamble and lunge his whole body forward and lose all balance towards getting the, trying to steal the ball and go for that easy layup. But if they miss the ball and they body is now completely out of position especially against great shooters they will pop that three-pointer right in front of you if nobody defending and your and your teammates will not be able to recover in time and that's very frustrating from a defensive philosophy point of view that makes you a bad teammate because the guard now has to rotate over and even if they do rotate over the other offensive player could easily swing it to that original offensive player and then the whole team's in scramble and you are tired just running around trying to defend the po- the three-point line and that your whole defensive team breaks down just because of one gamble you do not see that ever with great defensive players like Kawhi Leonard and Drew Holiday so shout out to that be disciplined be a disciplined defensive player so that is all we wanted to talk about today so we wanted to essentially give some love and shout out to un- um deserving but underrated players like Mike Conley of the Utah Jazz again now the best record in the NBA number one in the West and um, and second of all Drew Holiday the, the uh, in our mind one of the best defensive players and for sure one of the top defensive guards in the NBA right now thanks for listening this is the end of today's episode please like share with friends and subscribe